Fine. This is Pia Sundar. Welcome to this special episode where I'm going to talk about bond versus FD. So first, let us try to understand what is the basic difference between fixed deposit and the bond. And first of all, what is a bond? Fixed deposit, you know, is a fixed instrument. You go to a bank, put the money in bank fixed deposit. So the bank pays you uh, some interest, let us say 7% interest. But whereas the bonds, okay, the safest bond is the bond issued by the government and which is called GSEC. So GSEC stands for government security. Either people can buy the bond directly from the government when the government is selling the bonds or you can invest your money in mutual funds which are called gilt mutual funds and they will be investing in the government bonds. The first thing is that why not we directly invest in the government bond? Until few years before, the government bonds, the minimum denomination was something like a 10 lakh rupees. And not all people will be having 10 lakh rupees. It's only ultra HNI clients who will be having that kind of a money to buy the bonds directly from the government. And common man like you and me will have some smaller money. So what happens? There are some mutual funds. Now, we put all the money into the mutual fund. So the mutual fund will be collecting huge sum of money and they will be investing in the government security. These mutual funds, which invest only in the government bonds, so they are called the GILT mutual funds. So I was wondering why the name GILT, that name, you know, doesn't like not related to uh, in like something bonds or something like that. So today only I searched in Google so maybe I will show you. So, you know, the word guilt, it means a thin covering of gold. In Tamil, So, a thin covering of gold. But then what it has got to do with the bonds? Later, I checked Investopedia website. So, they say that in those days, the UK government so used to issue the bonds, the government bonds, which comes in a physical certificate. So in that physical certificate, uh, all around the certificate, you know, so that certificate is uh, laced with a, a thin covering of gold. From those days, you know, the government bonds are known as gilt bonds. So that's why the bonds are the mutual funds which are investing in the government bonds. So they are known as gilt mutual funds. So you just go to Google and type GILT mutual funds, uh, you will get all the details. Now, let us look at here, GILT mutual funds for the last one year performance. And you can see ICICB uh, Prudential GILT fund, one year return is 9.2%, SBA Magnum GILT fund 9.2%, DSP Government Securities fund 10.7%. So you can see most of the funds you know, have delivered, you know, uh, 8 to 10 percent return but you know uh, the fixed deposit for the last one year I don't think that any bank has given more than 8 percent so you go to some smaller banks like you know more small finance banks you know maybe you can get seven by eight percent but you know established banks I don't think that you know the maximum they offer by 6.5 seven percent now the question is if somebody has some surplus cash now should he put the money in bank FD or should he put the money in built funds or invest directly in government securities? So first let us talk about investment in government securities directly. As I told you earlier, the minimum threshold was 10 lakh rupees. But now I think that has been reduced to 1000 or 2000 something like that. Now even for smaller people also can buy the bonds directly. The RBA has made a lot of arrangements for that. That is on the positive side. On the negative side, earlier, if you put the money in bank FD, whatever the interest you are getting from the bank FD, that is taxable income. Say for example, if there is an ultra HNI client, so let us say he has about uh, 100 crore FD. So even if it is 7%, he will get 7 crore interest. So his total income will be more than 5 crore. If more than 5 crore, then his tax liability will be 42%. So whatever interest you are receiving from the bank, you end up paying about 30 to 42% tax. Okay. But whereas 
the same people had they invested in gilt funds this is considered as a mutual fund investment so the debt fund investments if you invest and hold it for more than three years then whatever the return you are getting it's equivalent to the interest only but it is considered as a capital gain it will not be considered as your income it will be considered as your capital gain so money invested in bonds like this uh, government securities you know they come under mutual fund investments holding more than three years then you know you are eligible for long-term capital gain tax of 20 percent with indexation benefit so therefore your tax liability will be very 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 little say for example 100 crore invested in bank fd you get 7 crore you know out of 7 crore almost you know uh, 3 crore will be going for tax same 100 crore invested here same 7 crore you are getting written you know your tax liability you know will be oddly like 10 15 lakh rupees so you know almost tax liability is nil but now the problem is that the government of india has changed the rule now investment in debt mutual funds is not eligible for capital gain that will also be considered as your income so the tax advantage is gone totally so whether you put the money in bank fd or whether you are putting the money in gilt funds so the, your returns are fully taxable so tax point of view there is no benefit but then what is the other benefit so why should we go for bond or when should we go for bond okay so that is what we are going to discuss in this video so to explain some basic facts i will just give you an analogy a small story okay let us say you have got one lakh rupees and you want to go and put the money in bank fixed deposit so what do you do you go and put the money in bank fixed deposit the bank agrees to pay about seven percent interest let us say you put for five year fd that means after five year only you can take the money back until then you can get only the interest however after one year if you have some emergency you can always go back to the bank and tell them i have some emergency i want to withdraw my money i want to pre-close my fd of course they'll be charging some penal interest but then they will be pre-closing your fd interest and they will pay you come this side to the bonds the government of india is selling let us say 25 year bond so once you put the money for 25 years you can never get back that money after one year you cannot go to the government and say i want my money back no they will not give but however in case of emergency you can sell those bonds in the open market say for example you bought the bond and you can give it to me i can pay the money to you then from next day the interest will be coming to me so in case of fd to whom you are giving the money bank in case you want the money back you can go back to the bank and ask for the return of money but in case of bond you are going to the government you know then in case of emergency you cannot ask the government to return the money but you can sell it in the open market instead of giving to the government directly or instead of buying the gsec directly from the uh, government you can put the money in gilt funds but that's a mutual fund in turn they will be investing this money in a government security after some time any time you know you want your money back you can always go for redemption so the mutual funds you know they will be having some surplus cash or you know the new money will be coming you know so they'll be redeeming you so they don't have to actually dispose the gsec so both are liquid only but there is one major difference between fd and the bond so that is what i'm going to focus in this video just to give you a story assume that you are going to a bank and you are putting one lakh rupees fixed deposit and let us say the bank tells you sir we will pay you seven percent interest but remember you cannot pre-close this fd you have to keep this fd with us for 10 years in between you cannot come and close the fd so you promise that there are nowadays uh, there are certain banks offering that uh, kind of fds you have to agree that you will never pre-close they will pay you a little bit more interest assume that you are doing like that okay you go and put one lakh rupees in fd the bank told you they will pay seven percent interest and cumulative at the end of 10 years in between you cannot go and 
ask for the money. Only at the end of 10 years only you will get it. So let us say you are great. Okay, you put 1 lakh rupees. Let us say last year. Now one year is over. So now tell me what is the value of your FD? You put 1 lakh rupees. One year is gone already. So for one year you are eligible for 7% interest. So that means your FD's notional value now is 1 lakh 7,000. 1 lakh is the principal plus 7,000 is the interest. 1 lakh 7,000. But however, the bank will pay you only after 10 years. That was the agreement between you and the bank. But the problem is now you have some emergency. You want the money back. So you cannot go to the bank. Now you are coming to me and telling me, Sir, you are my good friend. Okay, I made this agreement with the bank and I will go only after 10 years. But now I have some emergency. Sir, you know, you give me money and you keep the FD. As in when this FD matures, you take the money. It's based on the trust. Okay, because we both are friends, I agree to that. Now, question number one. How much money you will demand for this? What is the notional value of the FD? 1 lakh is the principal plus 7% is the interest. So 1 lakh 7% is what? The notional value. You will be demanding 1 lakh 7,000. That's a one case scenario. Coming to second scenario. For one or the other reason, in the last one year, the interest rates have gone up in the economy. Nowadays, banks offering 15% interest for the fixed deposit. Now, if this is the case, now tell me, if you demand 1,7,000, do you think I will be paying you 1,7,000? Because if I pay you 1,7,000, if I take your FD, for the rest 9 years, I'm going to get 7% interest only. But instead of taking your FD, if I go and put the FD directly with the bank, the bank will pay me 15% interest. And the bank is willing to pay me 15%, why should I buy from you for 7%? So definitely, though the notional value of your FD is 1,7,000, I will not be willing to pay for 1,7,000. Maybe I will ask for, okay, are you ready to give me 1,3,000 or 1,4,000? I will negotiate at a lower price. This is the second scenario. Now come to the third scenario. Let us say during the last one year, for one or the other reason, the interest rate in the economy has gone down. Now the interest rate is only 3%. Now tell me, will you be willing to uh, sell your FD to me at 1,7,000? No, you will demand more. You will demand 1,10,000 or 1,11,000. You know why? You will tell me, sir, you take my FD, you are going to get 7%. When you go to bank, you are going to get only 3%. So I will also be willing to pay more money. In this case, you know, your notional value of FD is 1,7,000. But depending upon the interest rate in the economy, okay, your actual value of the FD may be more than 1,7,000 or maybe less than 1,7,000. If the interest rate goes down in the economy, your actual value will increase. Interest rate goes up in the economy, your actual value will go down. Okay, and normally this does not happen in the FD, but this is exactly what will be happening in the bond. So let us say today you invest in government securities. Right now the government securities offer about 7% interest. Suppose you buy. If tomorrow, after one year, let us say the interest rate goes down in the economy, okay, you will be able to sell a bond okay with more than seven percent profit interest will be seven percent you will get some additional benefit in case interest rate goes up in the economy you will not be able to sell even at the notional value you will not be even getting seven percent you will be getting much less than that so that is what i explained so fixed deposit the bank offer you a percentage of return that will be the fixed one it will never go up it will never go down but if you put the money in bond Depending on the interest rate in the economy, your bond can give more than 7% also or it can be less than 7% also. So, when is the right time to invest in bond? If you are expecting the interest rates to go down in the future, that is the best time to invest in bonds. So, when the interest rate goes down, you will be getting better return. Right now, what is happening in the world, because in 2022, Russia-Ukraine war broke out, 
then US inflation shot up to 9%. So because of that, the interest rate has gone up many times. Now, FOMC says that, you know, they are going to cut the interest rate three times in this calendar year and four times in the next calendar year and then two times the following calendar year. So they are planning about nine to 10 times a cut. Even assuming that they are cutting quarter percentage point, but 10 times the cut of 25 basis points will translate into two and a half percent lower interest rate. Clearly, next one to two year, interest rates will be going down in US. If interest rate goes down in US, it will go down in other countries also. So right now, if you have some surplus cash, so it makes sense to invest in uh, gilt funds rather than uh, invest in the bank FD. So definitely your return will be slightly better. So this is for Indian residents. For NRAs, there is actually more uh, exciting product is there. So there is something called TLT, which is trading in US market. That is an exchange traded fund. So if you invest the money in that exchange traded fund, you can buy and sell in this uh, equity market. Uh, right now it is trading around $93. The money that you are investing in TLT, TLT is an exchange traded fund. So they collect the money and they put it in government securities of 20 year treasury bill. Whatever the 20 year bond interest is there, that interest will be uh, coming from this uh, exchange traded fund. Right now, the uh, at present it's around 4.3 to 4.4 percent. But 4.3 to 4.4 percent in US dollar is something really good. But icing on the cake now. And I'm sure uh, if you know a little bit about the stock market, you should know there is a strategy called covered call strategy. So what is covered call strategy? I just give an example. So let us say you believe, you know, uh, you want to invest money in Reliance Industries. The share price is trading around 3000 rupees. You are buying about 500 shares. It will cost about 15 lakh rupees. So you pay 15 lakh rupees and you buy Reliance Industry shares or 500 shares. Then what you can do in the futures and options market, the call options will be trading. So let us say 3,200 call option one month away. It's maybe trading around 10, 20 rupees. You sell that, that 10, 20 rupees will be coming to your pocket. Now there are two things can happen. By the end of the month, the Reliance Industry is maybe above 3,200 or below 3,200. So if the Reliance Industries is below 3,200, that call option will go to zero. Means whatever money you collected, it's coming to your pocket. So it's a free money for you. Anyway, Reliance Industries, you bought it for the long-term investment. Then the next month, again, you can go and sell 3,200 or 3,300 call option. But in case if the market goes above 3,200, whatever is the profit coming above 3,200, that profit will go to the option buyer. So you have to exit the position so your profit will be 3000 to 3200 rupees so 200 rupees will be the profit plus the premium collected so that will be your maximum profit anyway it's a good profit you can exit you can re-enter later when the market falls so this strategy is called covered call so in us markets even for tlt which is a, a debt mutual fund exchange traded fund the call options are trading so what i did about three months before i bought this tlt which was trading around 92.75 or something like that and then i sold 100 call option and it was about three months later so what can happen the tlt which i bought either it should go to above 100 or below 100 if it goes to above 100 i have to sell it so i bought at 92 and going to 100 that means eight percent return in three months eight percent return in three months is almost three percent return per month right so you know you are investing in a debt mutual fund. You are getting 3% per month return. It's a fantastic return. But of course, if it doesn't go, whatever the premium collected. I collected about 50 cents as a premium. That works out to be half a percent return. So after at the end of three months, you know, the price did not go above 100. So that call option premium, 50 cents has come to my pocket. So I've already made a half a percent return. Plus the 4.3 or 4.4% 4 .4 return, I will be getting from TLT. Now what happened? that March month expiry is over. Now for June month expiry, again, I sold call option, 100 call option. I think this time I sold for $1, I think. That means, you know, so every quarter you can sell call option. You can hope to generate some additional return. So in addition to 
the promised return of 4.3 or 4.4 percent from the exchange traded fund american market is a very matured market there are diversified you know opportunities uh, you know so even you can invest in gilt funds and you still can uh, make more money using covered call strategy in us markets so this is one extra benefit the nris can enjoy if they want to uh, invest in uh, us securities us uh, treasury bond in a nutshell so this is the time to invest in bond rather than uh, fixed deposit so this is for the people who are ultra conservative investors who are looking to put the money especially south indians you know so they know only three things one is the real estate second one is gold third one is fixed deposit so beyond fixed deposit so there are so many opportunities so i think this is the time to explore those new opportunities so hope you enjoyed watching this video thank you for watching